Hello everybody and welcome back to Markers and Monsters. As always, I am your humble host, Colin, and today we've got a very special episode. We are drawing the man in the beaver hat, Lon Chaney, from the 1927 lost silent film, London After Midnight. Now, a little bit of backstory about this uh, drawing here. Uh, my friend, Jazzy Jeff, contacted me a bit ago and said, Hey, man, I have uh, I know you're a Goosebumps collector. I've got some Goosebumps books, and I'd love to trade them for some artwork, to which I readily agreed, because Goosebumps, hell yes. So uh, he, I asked him what he wanted, and he said, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love London After Midnight. He had mentioned that before at some point to me that, he would have really liked a, a London After Midnight picture, so uh, I did this and one other drawing form, and we'll we'll do another drawing in another episode today. We'll just worry about London After Midnight. Uh, if you're not aware of Jazzy Jeff's uh, stuff, he's all over the internet doing all kind of cool stuff. You can check out his uh, YouTube channel. His uh, just search for Jazzy J714. That's him. And uh, he did an epic trading card review series for a couple of years. Now he's doing some uh, DVD reviews and all kind of other fun stuff. I, I recommend checking it out. You can also check out his Facebook page. Look for Jazzy Jeff 714 And uh, he always posts pictures and cool stuff there. I'll throw some links down there in the description for you. But I, I highly recommend checking it out. So this drawing was a ton of fun to get onto. As you can see here, I'm putting in blue for the shadows. And uh, just a quick bit about the drawing is uh, I kind of wanted to go for an almost monochromatic look. Uh, so I decided that instead of just pure black and white like the movie would have been, I wanted to give it like a, a vibrancy of color. And uh, <clears throat> pardon me, to that end I decided to kind of go with blues. And you'll see here I'll do an orange pop for the background to just kind of you know, pop it out. It's the contrasting color to blue. So I'm just kind of filling in the various shadows and stuff with uh, deep blues and then some lighter blues here. And it'll all get smoothed out here with a little bit of white for uh, Lon Chaney's ghoulish face in a bit. But yeah, that's usually how I start, just kind of outlining and getting these shadow areas and the darker areas done. Uh, once that's done, I kind of want to do erase everything because I know where all the lines are at this point. So no need for that pencil to get trapped. And there goes that super bright orange I'm, I'm laying down in for the background. Just kind of wanted to uh, contrast against the blue and, and kind of pop out. Kind of uh, wanted to give it this a uh, poppy feel rather than a uh, standard subdued you know, black and white feel. So, London After Midnight, let's chat about that for a little bit. If you've never seen the movie, well, not, neither has really anybody else. Uh, this film was a 1927 release, and it was a silent film, starring, of course, Lon Chaney, the Man of a Thousand Faces. You would know him from the uh, old silent universal Phantom of the Opera movie. He's been in all kind of cool stuff. He is the father of Lon Chaney Jr., who played the Wolfman, amongst other great... Uh, universal monster and other such fiendish roles and uh, Lon Chaney was a pretty uh, interesting guy um, or pretty interesting life story one thing about him is uh, he never made any talking film so you can never hear his voice on film uh, so completely silent star and he ended up dying of throat cancer uh, before he you know right at the end of the silent picture era and before the talkies really took off so uh, kind of ironic there in, in a weird way. But uh, yeah, this film was, I guess, kept in the, uh, what was that, the MGM vault for, I don't know, a number of years. And in 1967, the film nitrate, the, uh, the stock that film is made on, it's very combustible, caught fire and uh, the vault burned along with the only known copy of this movie. There were a whole bunch of other uh, movies in there. Um... You know, as far as I'm aware, movie serials, uh, they have backup copies, but the original Tom and Jerry cartoons, the, the original prints of those things, the masters, were all burned away. So this fire uh, in 67 consumed quite a bit, and unfortunately now you cannot see this movie. Uh, London After Midnight was directed by Todd Browning, who is a pretty famous director. He did uh, the original Dracula, you know, with Bela Lugosi, uh, the Universal Picture. 
Uh, he also went on to uh, remake this film in 1935, and it was called, I believe, Mark of the Vampire, if I'm not mistaken. Um, pardon me. But uh, that actually had Bela Lugosi, the original Dracula, in it in the Lon Chaney role. Now, as far as I'm aware with this film, since you know I haven't seen it, but uh, the plot concerns a uh, mysterious, uh, what the police think is a suicide, which turns out to be a murder of uh, some wealthy guy. And uh, Lon Chaney is the police detective for Scotland Yard, who's kind of tracking the killer down, trying to prove, no, it wasn't a suicide, it was a murder. So to that end, he's kind of dressing up in all these crazy roles, such as uh, the man in the beaver hat here and some other stuff in order to kind of uh, gaslight the killer, make the guy think he's uh, crazy or nuts, and get him to confess to this murder as it's confession's the only way for them to prove that this guy uh, actually, you know, uh, killed the person he said he was going to kill or killed the person who died. Um, so, yeah, so uh, there's tons of, uh, well, maybe not tons, but there's a good chunk of stills from this movie that are out there. Uh, which is pretty cool that we can, you know, even though the movie's gone, we can still see these images. And uh, I have to say, this this image here of uh, Lon Chaney as the uh, the man in the beaver hat, as he's called, or, or the vampire, is uh, pretty iconic. That that look, that that crazy makeup, almost like the Joker with that smile, is uh, very iconic. And a number of artists have done this over the years. I would say probably most famously would be uh, Basil Gogos did it for uh, Famous Monsters of Filmland. And I took a little inspiration from his uh, image uh, where he used these like bright colors in his and where he uses a lot more like greens and, and such. I wanted to keep it kind of the monochromatic, but still, I, I love the idea of using bright, vibrant colors to represent, you know, uh, black and white subjects and things that are normally subdued. So thanks. Thanks, Basil Gogos, for uh, the inspiration. I appreciate it. Um, Pardon me. Also, I would say that uh, this is the inspiration for if you are aware of the Disney ride, the Haunted Mansion, the uh, famous ghosts that are on the promotional images from that. But the uh, I believe it's the Hatbox Ghost is the one. He's kind of got this crazy grinning smirk on him, and uh, he carries like a hat box, which people say has like a severed head in it, kind of a deal. But uh, that that iconic look is is very represented. Uh, throughout fiction, through, throughout like advertising and fiction, and all over the place, pretty well. Uh, so as you can see here, as I'm inking this in, I'm covering up a lot of the blue areas with the black ink, but I'm still leaving a little bit of blue here and there to show. Especially if you look in where his uh, hair is coming down on the left side of the drawing, and then up in that hat there, I'm going to add in a little bit more cross hatching and some detail here, but still leaving a nice like blue area. Now, as far as the skin, I kept it kind of white, but added in some of the cool shadow is the name of the uh, Copic marker, and it's kind of a, a very light greenish shade, blue-green shade, just to kind of give that nice uh, uh, feeling of depth and, and shadow and all that, but not really going too crazy with it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty neat. This was a great request and something that I had been wanting to do for a while anyway, so I'm super thankful to Jazzy Jeff for uh, suggesting this for me. There's a signature, and now let's take a look here uh, at the scan once I get a couple last-minute details put in. And how about that scan? Okay. Looking pretty cool. Well, guys, this was a lot of fun. I had a blast talking about London After Midnight. Uh, if you can track down a copy, well, uh, I'd, I'd love to see a print. Uh, also, you'll probably be a millionaire, so you should probably get on that. Hey, big thanks to Jazzy Jeff for uh, suggesting this. Um, this was great fun. I love my Goosebumps books, so thanks, uh, thanks Jazzy Jeff. I, I love it. And uh, next video, too, should... Uh, be a little bit more about the other piece of art I did for Jazzy Jeff. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, that's it. This was Colin. This was Markers and Monsters. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks and bye.